Singers like Amy Winehouse don't come around very often. She was an old soul with a new sound, a unique blend of jazz and R&B with a bite. Her songs resonated with millions of fans, telling deeply personal tales of love and heartbreak. Amy exploded onto the world stage in the mid-2000s, becoming the music industry's it girl. But it was over almost as soon as it began. Drug addiction, a toxic relationship, and relentless media coverage would be her downfall. And unfortunately, when they tried to make her go to rehab, she said no, no, no. Hear her fascinating story today on Death and Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing, anyway? Death in entertainment. Hello, everybody. What's up there, Deado? Here we are. We're back. We are back, yeah. and we are also the same people. My name is Kyle Plouffe. My name, my name is still Mark Mulcairin. Mark Mulcairin. <laughs> I got and, it. You sure about that? You sure about that? <laughs> and I'm Alejandro Dowley, <laughs> and I am sure about that. <laughs> sure about that? <laughs> that was our weirdest introduction. <laughs> it might uh, be, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I made that happen. I inspired that. You're welcome. You well, are welcome. Well, today... We have a hot show. This is Scorching. Amy Winehouse. Oh Long time God. coming. Sizzling. Yeah. We've been talking about this for a while. Finally, we're doing it. Yep, we got here. Well, I think we should get right into it because this is a big story. It's a meaty story. There's a lot Mega. to it here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to get through. Yeah. Yep. So, with that, why don't we go to July 23rd, 2011? <laughs> July 23rd, 2011. What's going on in the UK Top 40? Okay, we got number three, The A-Team by Ed Sheeran. Is that Was he doing a song about the um, Mr. T TV show? We're the A-Team. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little late in the game to be doing yeah. A-Team songs. Yeah, it's true. And uh, he's a Brit, remember. He's not an Irishman. I know. I, I thought he was, uh, you know, one of those. They really don't like that over there when you mix those two up. They, the, there's an interview with Killian Murphy. They're like, so you're British, right? He's like, no, he's Irish. He's like, same thing. And they're like, well, excuse, whoa, excuse whoa, yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he pulled pull out a Tommy saying? gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the red hair and the yeah. accent. I thought he was Irish, but he was not. Okay. Uh, hit this A-Team by Ed Sheeran is the first hit single from his debut album, which I did not. Did not know. Good for that guy. Yeah. Number two is Louder by DJ Fresh. What? Mm. What's DJ? F Wait. Freaking freak Fresh. Sounds like a place where you would buy a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that the guy from Fresh Prince in Bel Air? No. Oh, okay. That's different. Jazzy guy. Jeff. Oh, yeah. Jazzy yeah. Jeff. Different decade. Different yeah. decade. Different everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number one song on the UK Top 40 on July 23rd, 2011 is Glad You Came. By The Wanted. That's a British boy band. They had a Twitter feud with One Direction. And uh, Tom Parker, one of the members of The Wanted, died of a brain tumor in 2022. Oh, a lot of ups and downs of that group, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. It's, uh, Poor it's guy. Going on. Yeah. And yeah. they were the flip side to One Direction. Yes. It was two British boy bands going head to head. Yeah. yeah. The NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. That was their answer of the to, UK. That was their answer to like the East Coast, West Coast rap battles. Yeah. That that led to the deaths of Biggie and Tupac. Yes. <laughs> exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, I will get into the top movies at this time, July 23rd, 2011. Um, number three in the British box office. This is surprising to me. <laughs> Horrible Bosses is wow. number three. <laughs> Maybe they just really like Jason Sudeikis or, or Charlie uh, Murphy, whatever his name is. I still have never seen this movie. I did not know Meghan Markle is in this movie. Is she? Yeah. Well, well, Alejandro put her as like one of the top build stars. I, <laughs> I'm sure she's like, you know, third person from the left. You were supposed to read it exactly as written. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's starring Jason Sudeikis, Jamie Foxx, and Meghan Markle? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> she plays a UPS delivery woman. Oh, um, wow. she's a piece. So of she's work. like an extra. 
Yeah. A glorified extra. Wow. Yeah. Glorified extra big, to uh, the royal family. Big <laughs> and then out actress. of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now she's on her way out of there. Yeah, yeah. she's been recast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For no one. Mm -hmm. um, number two, British box office. Cars 2 is number two also. A lot of times a sequel winds up to be the number on the box office list. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wow. Yeah, weird stuff, huh? Owen Wilson. Wow. Uh, this one is featuring, as Kyle was doing, a great impression of uh, Owen Wilson and Larry the Cable Guy, a.k.a. Dan Whitney. Yep. Get her done. Get her done. Just don't get her pregnant. Hey. Oh, yo, boy. You never heard him say that? Hey. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I did now. I love Greg Giraldo's bit on him. He's like at one of the roasts. He's like, we're now roasting fictional characters. Yeah. Who are we doing next year? SpongeBob SquarePants? <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Greg Giraldo. R.I.P. Greg Giraldo. Future, Future episode. episode. Yeah, yeah. Jinx. Jinx. Number one, British box office, Harry Potter in the Deathly Hallows, part two. Wow. This is the shortest Harry Potter movie running at two hours and ten minutes. And wow. you feel every minute of that time, Oof. I feel like. I'd hate to see the other ones. Yeah. That's the shortest. <laughs> yeah. I've only seen the first one. That's it. I've seen none of them. Yeah. I didn't read the book, so I didn't care about this. And uh, yeah, I, not my cup of tea. I can't read. So. Oh, you can't read. Yeah, oh, okay. No. That's a first on here. And this annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> they did that thing where they split the last movie into two movies and released them a year apart oh, to squeeze huge. some more money. Yeah. Hunger yeah. Games. Or no. Yeah. Hunger, yeah, Hunger Games, Games did it. And Twilight copied it. Yes. Yeah. Who falls for that formula? Seriously, <laughs> like everyone. I'm yeah. gonna pay for it twice yeah. a year apart. Yeah, this is how Warner Brothers like stayed alive for the last couple of years before they got up a uh, discovery. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Twilight, yeah, July 23rd, this day in history, the Twilight Zone disaster happens in 1982. Same day. Same day. What? July 23rd, 1982. Oh Lord. Yeah. What is that? 29 years. Yeah. Wow. And I think yeah. that is the day when um, Oppenheimer is coming out and the Barbie movie this year. Okay, wow. so it's the day of disasters. Day of dis yeah, <laughs> well, we'll see. If those movies don't do well, <laughs> the movie business is done. Yeah. And you know what isn't done? What's that? This episode. Okay, wow. we're not done yet. We've got more to come. Guys, we're here. Get used to it. We're in England. Oi, mate. Isn't it? We're in Camden Town. We're in Camden, isn't it? London. And it's <laughs> 1983. Hey, bruv. September 14th. This is the day that Amy Winehouse came to this earth. Wow. Her parents were Janice and Mitch, a pharmacist and a cab driver, respectively. Wow. Nice. That's a very humble beginnings for her. Yeah. For some reason, I thought she was like some Nepo baby or something. I don't uh, know why. Not at all. No. Wow. She had one older brother named Alex. Alex. Not Alejandro. No. Alex. <laughs> no one thought that. <laughs> <laughs> no one confused that at all. <laughs> Crystal clear. <laughs> Her uncles were working jazz musicians, however. So you said, was she a Nepo baby? No, but jazz was in her blood. Wow. Yeah. The house was always full of music, namely 1950s jazz crooners like Frank Sinatra. Croonin'. Croonin' Amy... spoonin'. <laughs> I don't know about the spoonin'. <laughs> okay. Well, they were probably spooning food at these dinner parties. I so hope so. Sure. I hope they had something to eat. Amy, of course, had a natural talent, as you might imagine she would, right? Well, I, I feel like she had a great voice right out the bat, right? Or did it take some time to actually get there? No, she right out, right out of the womb. Just a natural, womb. natural sing. Right out the womb, she was yeah. singing. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they in, think she's crying. In but perfect she's, cadence. She's just scatting. Like, <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was part of a doo-wop band right at the uh, right on the womb. <laughs> and then during the parties at the house, she was that kid that would sing to everyone. Like, Amy, get down here, do your thing. Yeah. Yo, be swell. 
<laughs> oh, like God. Ethel Luck be a lady tonight. <laughs> She's smoking as like that three year old. <laughs> hey, what do you want me to stand? She's a real crooner. Yeah. <laughs> She's laying on a piano somewhere. <laughs> She's doing keys of coke in between songs. <laughs> How old is that kid? Four years old. I love her. And the 2015 documentary titled Amy, it has a really great opening, which I'm going to play for you right now. So this is home video footage from her friend's 14th birthday party. It's my 14th <laughs> birthday evening and party. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> so she pretty much steals the show. Yeah, you can Not, tell she actually knew what she was doing. Kind of a sparsely attended birthday party there. <laughs> I gotta say, not a lot of people there. That's like the Billy Batch party from Goodfellas, kind of. <laughs> it was more of a happening. Yes, okay. And, yeah. it, and it's a good video that showcases her early abilities. I get it. Yes. Not a lot of people there, though. And so, <laughs> <laughs> that poor friend, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but also, you know, you show up to your friend's birthday and you show her up and everyone, like, uh, you're the focus of attention. Yep. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of a... You know, like yeah. egotistical. Imagine thing if to I do. came to your birthday, but I started tap dancing in the middle of the entire party. <laughs> We're all like, happy I like that birthday guy. Is it his birthday? <laughs> to you. And then suddenly you start going, happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah. That's probably how I would sound, though. I don't, really, I don't have a great, strong singing voice. So. so, whenever Amy would get in trouble at school, she would sing, Fly Me to the Moon. Ooh. Fly to me to pizza. the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the only Sinatra I do is uh, Phil Hartman's version of Frank yeah. Sinatra. Fly me to the moon. <laughs> Come on, baby, let's go. You know, <laughs> we're just barking orders at Stephen Eady. <laughs> <laughs> and she had a close relationship with her nan, Cynthia. That's what they call it there in Britain. Yeah, otherwise known as Grandma. Yeah. Nan. Here's me fucking nan in it. And so this is <laughs> she's a eight three in it. In it. <laughs> she's me bruv in it. Me me grandma. <laughs> so something huge happens when Amy is eight, nine, ten year old. Her parents separate. Ooh. Oh man. The dad, Mitch, had been having an affair. The Ooh. cab driver. How is this guy getting chicks? <laughs> <laughs> well, because he's, he's, he's literally he's picking a up side... a lot of women in the taxi cab. Yeah, you know, maybe. You do see day. a lot of people, yeah. He's a cab driver with a side piece. And so after a long period of staying together, Mitch finally moved out of the house and was only sporadically involved in Amy's upbringing. Yeah. She says that he wasn't there for the important bits, like discipline. Yeah, like mm -hmm. when she would stay out past curfew, he wasn't there to be like, "Amy, you can't do that." Yeah, well, it seems like he doesn't have any discipline himself. Yeah, not really. Oh yeah, he can't control himself. Clearly. He can't not fuck anyone that gets into the back of his cab. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little problem I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, he's a jazz singer on the side. Oh wow. Ah, uh, so he's one of those never made it type guys. He's still. Holding out that flame, maybe he might be able to make it. And he's still living the lifestyle as if he did make it as a professional musician. Yeah, basically. And there's more on that later, okay. by the way. Oh, boy. Oh, nothing worse than like a showbiz dad that drives <laughs> yeah. a cab. Drives a cab. <laughs> yeah, he's not bitter at all. Yeah. yeah, things went great. Amy seemingly got over it rather quickly. She started to come into her own as a teenager because she realized, okay, dad's out of the household, so I can swear and wear whatever I want and do whatever I want. Yeah. But also, she was sad. So she was put on antidepressants as a teenager. Mm. The only one I could confirm was Siroxat. Never That's heard an of that antidepressant? One. Yeah. It sounds, like, strong. Yeah. This and then name. she told her mom that she had this great diet. She eats what she wants, and then she brings it all up. Oh, oh no, that's not good. Oh, so, not good bulimia. Idea. Man. Oof. 
her mom Janice hoped it would pass. So she didn't really take it that seriously. She thought it was a phase that her daughter was going through because of the divorce. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, it did not pass. Yeah. But music, that was Amy's number one outlet. That was her passion. That was her life. As I already mentioned, she's a natural talent, and she's been performing for a while for the family. By 14, she was playing guitar and writing her own songs. Jesus wow. Christ. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I, I was doing nothing at Crushing 14. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was horribly playing hockey. Yeah. So Amy's influences were what she was hearing in the house. Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, but then also Salt and Pepper. Hey. Wow. That's, nice. I love Salt and Pepper. So she's so, so Salt and Pepper's here. So 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 Salt and Pepper's here. Whoa. Is Salt and Pepper in the room right now? Yeah. They've infiltrated these waves. Yeah. They've they've tapped into our lines. So Amy's mixing jazz and hip hop now. Loosely hip hop, though. Yeah, she kind of creates her own style, but of like R R and B. Yeah, she does like an alt R and B kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Alt is a good word. Alt is always what you throw on when you don't know where else to put it. <laughs> that, yeah. That's that's true too. Or indie indie R and B. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? Nothing. And let's talk about her singing, her talent. She had a three octave vocal range in a contralto style. Are you impressed that I know that word? I don't know what it means, but I'm impressed that you were able to say it. Yeah, I don't know any of that stuff. It sounds good, though. To Contr have. <laughs> contralto is the lowest female voice type. Ooh. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Nobody knows. <laughs> Spaceballs, shut up. Yeah. Like Freddie Mercury had a wide range like that and yeah. i noticed this is not a dig on amy winehouse but she also has large teeth mm -hmm. like freddie mercury so i don't know i'm kind of thinking what do you what are you attributing that to like the teeth have something to do with the vocal range yes it allows them to get to those ranges and areas that other people cannot because it it comes out more different <laughs> comes from between the teeth <laughs> bigger mouth Thank you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. the scientific way to yeah. put it. That would make sense because it allows you to kind of open up and, and get more out of your vocal cords. Yeah. Speaking of teeth, she cut her teeth, her rather large teeth, nice in segue. clubs like <laughs> Jazz After Dark in London's Soho district. So she's just roaming the streets of London just performing at, like, what, 17 years old or something? Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, I, you know, she would go with her friends. And, but everyone knew she was a blossoming talent yeah. yeah record companies were starting to take notice because they would go to these clubs and that's her, when a and r people actually gave a shit and actually would would try to seek out new talent now yeah. today they just they'll put on tiktok or whatever yeah and another way that amy stood out was because she had this giant personality gobby as they put it in england she was like a hot mess just like strutting through these clubs would not even hot mess not yet at least biting she would say what's on her mind she didn't care who she offended yeah she was honest blunt yeah. blunt exactly yeah. and then add that to her music which had the distinct style and sound she's got a reputation for a big persona and and it, it's matching her on stage performances absolutely her songs were personal and the lyrics had a lot of depth like, um, let's look at this song called Fuck Me Pumps. Oh okay, go on. <laughs> the lyrics go, you're more than a fan looking for a man, but you end up with one night stands. He could be your whole life if you got past one night, but that part never goes right. So there's always a kind of punchline to the lyrics. Yeah, Hip -hop. Did, there's a poetry to it. And here I have a clip of her talking about her writing style early on. I think when I was growing up, the music that was in the pop charts or the, you know, the music that was, that people were releasing at the time, I just thought this isn't music, this is watered down or this is, you know, just crap. Someone else has written it for you and you have to sing it. It's very much the case with some music today. So I really started writing music just as a cha to challenge myself, you know, to see what I could write or, you know, just because there was nothing else there that I could listen to at the time. 
So in other words, she's better than everything she's hearing on the radio. Yeah. And she doesn't like it. I'm wondering what was on at that time that she was referencing. It would have been like emo 2000s, like Kyle's kind of music. Hell yeah. <laughs> like ev- evanescence, yeah, or evanescence. Evanescence. Or whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> and Creed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of like uh, big industry created artists who were not like real. They were just like cast, basically. Yeah. yeah. So we talked about Fuck Me Pumps. Yup. You know, kind of, you know, clever lyrics. Well, other songs were more autobiographical, like Stronger Than Me, where she sings about looking for a strong male figure. Not like that, necessarily. (laughs) Okay. Well, no, it is like that, because she's looking for that in her man. Sure. But also, let's apply that to her dad leaving at an early age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's looking for that strong male figure in her life, mm. yeah. and she craves it. Get in the back of a cab. Is it going to be someone in, in in the industry or someone she works with maybe also? Like a producer who could take advantage of her? Well, you know, could be. Tale as old as time. She had a friend named Nick Shemansky. Peers. They were, you know, just good buds, as they yeah. say. That's Shemansky for you. And he worked for a promotions company owned by Simon Fuller. Do you guys know who that is? American Idol? Yes. Yeah. Created American Idol. A billionaire. Yeah. Gotcha. He's a British guy. British guy, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is all in England still. Yes. And so Nick got her some rehearsal time. And like I said, her rise was fast. She signed a publishing deal in 2002 with Island Records. Damn. With Simon Fuller backing her as, uh, what, what do you call that? Like Financier? Producer? Management, actually. Yeah. Okay. Basically, her friend Nick, that's what he wanted to do. So he was very green in that industry, but he happened to be working for Simon Fuller. Oh, wow. So with his guidance, his he's, yeah, he starts to manage Amy, well, his at some good point, friend. A guy like uh, Schmemansky, as good as nice as he is, like I, I think you need someone bigger like Fuller in order to get her that exposure that she needs. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. and that's all she needed. Yeah. In fact, president of Island Records, Nick Gatfield, recalled that when she entered the room the first time he saw her to audition, he said she was a force of nature. Yeah. Damn. And he remembers thinking, God, I hope she's good. Well, the thing is, I think with like newer artists today, um, or like a lot of these like people with great voices, there's no character that goes along with it. There's no persona. There's there's you know, there's no like Billy Holiday type person mm-hmm. coming in. Yeah. You know, Billy Holiday's not coming through that door tomorrow. You know, yeah. they do, they'll be old and gray. But like, I think they see someone that they, they can sell, someone mm-hmm. who's marketable that comes with the story, who's like kind of a hot mess. Yes. Yeah. And I, I can just envision with myself doing stand up is like you have that hope after you meet someone off stage without seeing their act and being like, oh, this person's like put together. They know how to fucking talk to you, like likable. And then. <laughs> as soon as they get on stage, you're like, fuck, I hope they're good because they're like a nice person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, I want to like this person as much as I possibly can. And seeing someone that just goes up and eats shit that does not know how to write a joke or perform at all, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, God. Right. They're just bomb. <laughs> yeah. They, they, anything you thought of them is just depleted. Gone. Yeah, yeah. God, <laughs> immediately. So that's like her, except she yeah. didn't eat shit. Yeah, he, yeah he, exactly. He could, she's amazing. She, she could follow it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So at that point, it's like, okay, um, just sign here and let's go. Yeah. And so in fall 2003, at age 20, she released her first album with Island Records titled Frank. Wow. And what do you think that title means? Sinatra? Yes. Blue Eye Baby. But what else could it mean? Luck be a lady tonight. She's being Frank. Yes. Oh. Her name is Frank now. Yeah. (laughs) I'm Frank, bruv. I'm Frank, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I got the deepest female we voice only in the know, land. We only isn't know it? two current British terms as isn't it in isn't uh, it? bruv. Bruv. Hey, bruv. My name Bill. <laughs> bruv. Bruv. <laughs> 
I kind of sound like the guy from Love Lady, too. Yeah, you're going, you're going deeper and deeper. Yeah. Remember the Love Lady character? I love them, man. I love them ladies. Y'all got to remember them. Oh, that hurts my voice as I talk like that. Well, guess what? He back. Yeah. <laughs> but he live in England now, isn't it? The guy from the bowels of Love Lady, Texas. You know, British people do love doing the Southern accent, the American yeah. Southern accent. Yeah. For some reason, that translates well. Like, Michael Caine was in some dumb movie with the kid from The Sixth Sense. Oh, like a Kelly Joel Osment. Osment? Yeah. And Michael Caine <laughs> played his uncle on, like, a farm. Yeah. <laughs> Who's not British. <laughs> what? Yeah, I swear to God. Secondhand Lions, it's called. It oh, sounds boy. awful. Okay, back to Frank. Frank. Uh, let me be frank with you. Okay. People thought her voice was amazing. She exploded onto the scene. Ra, that's what they called her. And it was a very strong debut, sold very well. And obviously, she's now the British it girl. Yeah. yeah. Amy says she designed the album, Frank, so that you could listen to it quietly and appreciate the chords, mm. but then you can blast it and feel the beats. Wow. So a little something for everyone there. So yeah. she like was the architect of how she wanted this to be heard by people. Yeah. And here's a clip of her from 2004 on the Jonathan Ross show. I like this guy. He's got a yeah. character. You're managed by the company, look after S Club 7, you used to look after the, the Spice Girls, Simon Fuller. Uh, have they tried to, to mould you in any way, though, if people ask you to do things to change the way you look or speak or behave? Um, yeah, one of them tried to mould me into a big triangle shape, and I went, no. Nah, you know, I've got my own style. I've got my own style, and I, I wrote my own songs, and, you know, if someone has so much of something already, there's very little you can add. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I don't know about that joke right off the top there. Not really for me. <laughs> I crushed, though. I guess so. <laughs> I don't know if they, they're sweetening that uh, audience a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you don't think I she was a comedian. <laughs> I know. She was not a comedian, clearly. He's like Jordan Peterson. Women aren't funny. <laughs> <laughs> Did he make that claim also? Yes. Yeah. He hates women. We know that. Now go <laughs> clean my room. <laughs> clean your room. I'm going to cry about something vague in a minute. <laughs> clean my room. Clean my room while you're at it or else I'll cry. Men have it tough. Gee. <laughs> yeah. So most deaf, as he was known at the time, Hip hop artist, Yasin yeah, well, Bay. What's he got to do with this? Yeah, I'm not dead naming him. You're, well, yeah, at the you said time, at the time. I, yeah. Yes, thank you. That's yeah. not dead naming. That's a different thing. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm confused. I just remember him coming on Bill Maher and saying that he didn't think Osama bin Laden took down the twin towers. Oh God. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a, got some wild. He's theories. got some wild theories. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we'll get into that another day. Okay. Yeah. So Yasin met Amy at the Urban Music Festival in London in 2004. Where and, else, isn't it? Isn't it? And he just thought, <laughs> hey, bruv. He just thought she was the coolest cat. Cats me out. <laughs> she was raw. She was fast with a blue joke. Could drink anybody under the table. Wasn't afraid to roll the smoke. Had a big giant laugh. And was just a sweetheart, you know. So you can picture that, though, the way he describes her. Yeah. When you ran into her on the scene, like, who is this? Yeah. So talented, so interesting. Yeah. Full of life. At that time, yes. Yeah. yeah. Also, around this time, Amy met a music video production assistant slash runner, I guess you would call him, named Blake Fielder Civil. Uh, I don't even like the look of this guy. Yeah, three names, no good. And right off the bat, I'm going to say... This guy is like a skinnier Simon Monjack. He's yeah. a barnacle on the ship. Yeah. Just trying to do everything he can to he hold He looks on. like a Cato Kalin, like a guy who's really good at the party because he knows how to like do drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like a skateboarder who doesn't skateboard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Aimless, just kind of dude working that. as a production assistant at like 30. Yeah. yeah, so they met at a bar, and he was part of this whole scene that included people like Pete Doherty. Oh, yeah. Like musicians and artists who are like, if you're signed by a record label, then you fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> you're trash. <laughs> yeah, you're trash. If you're successful, fuck you. I so feel whack. like they were like, they were the response to like the strokes like they had their own scene there and like you know i'm, I'm sure every every generation of english people have their own scene yeah. going on there 
They were immediately drawn to each other. They just... Love it, at first sight? Are we calling yeah. A crazy love at first sight. Yeah. So that was the beginning of a very storied and destructive relationship. Mm. They called each other soulmates. He was kind of like the male version of her in some ways, except without any discernible talent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they had issues that they were both dealing with. Like she had her dad leaving when she was young and being in and out of the picture. So that messed her up a whole lot. Yeah. And then he says he had problems with his stepdad. Where he wanted his mom to leave his stepdad. Yeah, I'm sure the stepdad was actually a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look so, at this guy. I, I trust the stepdad over this guy with the hat choice. Look at that hat. Yeah, the stepdad probably said, get a job. Yeah, yeah. get a better hat. That hat is so <laughs> trash. He's wearing, awful. <laughs> what is that hat? I don't. It's know. like a fishing hat. Yeah, it looks like a, a piece of the worst piece of furniture from like the Catskills <laughs> was made into a hat. <laughs> so he thought that was cool. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to wear this hat, bruv. Yeah. Everyone's going to love me, isn't it? And you haven't mentioned the white <laughs> tank top. Yeah, he's the wearing. wife beater he's wearing. Yeah. It looks like he has a chevron tattoo on his <laughs> left shoulder. <laughs> Does he? Fucking Jesus. I support oil companies, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got chevron on me bum, isn't it? Free enterprise, <laughs> mate. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck global warming. <laughs> the Exxon Valdez was right, mate. Fuck you. I'm a Republican, mate. <laughs> I and love they, the U.S. Supreme Court, mate. <laughs> so they're, they're partying together, drinking heavily, and she starts cutting herself. Like, she yeah. carves his name into her stomach with a piece of glass. Cutting's not good. No. Things got out of control very quickly with these two. One time, her friends found her with, like, this big bump on her head. She had fallen or got hit somewhere, and she was just sitting on her bed in pain. They looked around her apartment, and it was messy, like squatters had taken over. Mm. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing, Amy? You're the it girl. Yeah. It's like a tornado ran through there. Her friends, Nick Shemansky, also her manager, and Lauren and Juliet. Those are her really good friends. They organized a plan to get Amy into rehab mm. for the first time. Yeah. She actually broke down and admitted that she may have a problem, that she was lost and out of her depth yeah. with everything that was happening. Because it's hard to imagine being the it girl. But there's a lot that's expected of you. Yeah. So it perpetuates itself once, you know, the, the, the industry people working for you, they love it, though. They mm -hmm. love the press that comes oh, along yeah. with it. Oh, big time. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it makes your life a complete disaster. But, mm -hmm. the, you know, they just see the dollar signs. Yeah. And drinking and drugging is not going to cut it. Yeah. No, it's not. Not forever. It may work for a little time, yeah. but it's not going to work very long. Yeah, yeah, you'll blow some steam off, but then when you're getting to the point where your friends are concerned about your dwelling being unsafe, uh, that's, that's a whole new level. As George Carlin said at some point, the pain goes up and the fun goes down. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Yep. So Amy agreed to go and meet with a representative from the rehab center. But then she changed her mind and said, I'll go and see if my dad thinks I should go. Oh, God. What? Mm -hmm. Why would you consult with this bum? Yeah, this guy that's banging someone in the back of his cab right now. <laughs> yeah. With the meter still running. <laughs> Scumbag. It's part of the charge, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, he wants to be a jazz singer, too. Yeah, so, so he he's must... just singing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but is he a little resentful of her at this point? Of course Now he that be. she's up and coming. Jealous. Yeah, yeah of course. He's like, he, I, he feels like he did this because yeah. he inspired her with all this music and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Her friend said that she acted like a child around him. She sat in his lap and started pouting. And so her dad, Mitch, famously said she was fine. Wow. And didn't need to go to rehab. And if that sounds familiar, that's it's from the song. Literally the lyrics from the song Rehab. Yeah. That's the worst thing, too, because it like that song is just everywhere. Mm -hmm. And people are just singing that in the streets and stuff. And she's hearing it back to herself, like her own stupid message and he confirmed in his book this might shock you that he wrote a book about oh her my yeah, god called amy comma my daughter yeah he confirmed that that's true he <laughs> said that at the time but then he says the clip where they get that from oh was edited because he went on to say at that time 
I just meant she didn't need rehab at that time. Yeah, yeah okay. right. So he kind of just thought she was, oh, she's just a youngin. Yeah, well, his life is, is a disaster, so he probably thinks everyone's life should be a disaster, too. Yeah. He said this kind of thing all the time. This is a clip from later on. How's Amy doing at the moment? She's doing pretty good. She's, uh, you know, I think she's made a, a very good recovery. And uh, clearly there's a long way to go in a lot of senses, but um, she's doing fine. Does he dye his hair? <laughs> no. So <laughs> did you notice he says she's doing fine? He must have said that all the time, which is why it was the lyrics to the song. Yeah. My daddy thinks I'm fine. Yeah. My God. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what you call that. An enabler? An asshole. Yeah, it's someone who wants to stay on the payroll. Yeah. He's not going to make any waves. I think everyone around her just wants to keep the money machine going. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely was a money machine. But the thing is, she did have enablers around her sometimes that still cared for her quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, it could be as small, even though it's not very small, being the guy that just wants to stay on the payroll, but it could be as nefarious as him being okay with her partying to death and then being like, oh, I'm going to uh, get all the residuals and all that stuff. And then people will look at me being like, you were her dad. You could probably sing too. Yeah. He probably had these grand ideas in his head that yeah, he's probably he'd be talking, able to get put on. He's talking to these managers, Schmelinski or any of these guys. He's like, so when do I uh, get my shot here? Yeah. Yeah. So needless to say, Amy did not end up going to rehab. And Nick Shemansky, her manager, says that they lost a very key opportunity to help her at that Early time. On. Yeah. Amy bought a place in Camden with all her new success. And that's when, according to close friend Juliet, things started to change. She was getting a little more edgy. She was getting a little more paranoid. She was smoking crack, right? Not yet. Oh, okay. But she was drinking a lot. Yeah. Because anticipation was growing for her sophomore album. Mm. Frank was a huge success and it was getting buzz in the United States, but obviously in Europe it was much bigger. But the second one is going to be the one that they think is going to blow her up. So then the record company, Island Records, they're like, Amy, where's the album? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Things take time. And so instead of working on that album, she spent 2005 partying and focusing on her boyfriend, Blake. Ugh. With the fishing hat. So she just blew <laughs> off the entire album. This is a to quote. With this bum. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a quote from Amy Winehouse. I stopped working in January 2005. I was supposed to be writing an album, but I didn't have something to throw myself into. I was playing pool every day for four hours, just getting drunk, having to be carried home in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. And then this I could see her playing pool too, just like getting yeah. hammered. <laughs> oh yeah. Missing every ball on yeah, the table. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, if you're playing that much every day, you better become pro. Is there nothing else you have to do that day? <laughs> yeah. So this clip explains her process. Success to me is not success to the record company what or is whoever. Success to, success to me is ha having the freedom to work with whoever I want to work with. Yeah. Um, to always be able to just fuck everything off and go to the studio when I have to go to the studio. The more people see of me, the more they'll realise that all I'm good for is making tunes. So leave me alone and I'll do it. I will, put, I will do the music. I just need time to do the music. You know what I mean? Now, what I mean, they always say that at the end of their sentence. Not mean. Yeah. I do know what she means, though. Yeah. It's like, I'll get it to you. Don't right. worry about it. But don't pressure me either. Yeah, you can't rush greatness. Or brilliance. Yeah. Bruv. Bruv, isn't it? <laughs> So her relationship with Blake was always on again, off again. At one point, he went back to his girlfriend. His previous girlfriend. Yeah, his previous girlfriend, and Amy was devastated. It's amazing how guys like that just have, like, a roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just God. some fuck boy with a shit hat. Yeah. But even Simon Monjack, he <laughs> had kids. Tattoos. He yeah. had kids and other women, and he, yeah. was a, he looked like a monster. Yeah. yeah. Late 2005. Amy goes to Miami and starts writing new music with producer Salam Remy. She's vibing with this guy. And for the time she was with him there, he says she was sober. 
Wow. Doing this process in who, Miami. Yeah, who goes to Miami to get sober? Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna get clean. Time to pack my bags and go to Miami. <laughs> yeah. The cocaine capital Time of for the, South yeah, Beach, North yeah. America. Yeah. yeah, I need to clear my head. I'm going to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to Medellin, Colombia, to get off of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next stop was the studio, May 2006. Demo tracks for the songs You Know I'm No Good and mm. Rehab appeared on Mark Ronson, a producer, yeah. Mark Ronson's New York radio show. Wow. Yeah. And he loved it, He, as everyone does. Like, they know this girl's got it. Just so good. Yeah, yeah. so they vibed like she did with Remy, and Ronson went on to produce the album. And I think what he added is the polish. He did a song on there called Valerie, which she sings in. I don't know if he put that on his solo album or they put it on both of theirs, but this song, Valerie, is amazing. It's so amazing. Good. It's my favorite Amy Winehouse song. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It's uh, it's it's really good. It's like upbeat and, mm -hmm. you know, she's great in it. She's not in the music video, I remember. I don't know what happened with that, but clearly she, she had other stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was officially on the album. It was on his album, I think. I think yeah. he put it on his own. Like uh, It's a cover, you know, by the way. I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? If you hear the original version, it's crazy the difference. It's the perfect example of somebody redoing a song and making it their own. Yeah, it's wow. crazy. The song Valerie was uh, originally by English indie rock band The Zootons. Horrible name. Uh <laughs> It, they came Sounds out. like something in your salad on Mars. <laughs> yeah, hold the Zootons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like an improv group in the future. Some... <laughs> yeah, the Zootons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but why are they still doing improv in the future? <laughs> why isn't improv outlawed <laughs> <Yeah>. by then? <laughs> <laughs> and horrible punny names like yeah. this. Can I get a, a chicken Caesar salad with extra Zootons, please? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Mark Ronson covered it with uh, Amy Winehouse, and uh, on Spotify, it's just coming up on his on, on Mark Ronson's. Yeah, there was yeah. an album called Version. Okay, in two thousand seven, it could have been a like a special things. release too, like one of those things that's like it's such a good song, but for some reason it's not on an official album. Well, yeah, he would make these uh, kind of like mixtape albums. He did it with uh, Bruno Mars. Don't believe me, just watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, that's right. He yeah, had a yeah. bunch of those songs come out at the same time. Kind of so. like Daft Punk, they just use a collection of other artists yeah. and stuff to sing for them. Right. Uptown Funk. Uptown Funk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uptown Funk you up. Uptown Funk you up. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? Yeah, I like. I hate every song, but that I, I just get taken away from that one. Yeah. I would sing Valerie, but I would sound nothing like yeah. the song. So. Save I yourself the embarrassment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as I mentioned earlier, her friends were saying she was starting to change a bit more. Things were getting chaotic. Well, Amy started to cut out friends and family. Mm. And Nick Shemansky, good friend, manager, who helped her get into the business, he was suddenly out. Wow. She changed management to a promoter named Ray Cosbert of Metropolis Music. Never heard of him. And they say this was dangerous because, think about it, a promoter is also the manager, so yeah. his main focus is going to be touring, the yeah. road, and that's not healthy for Amy Winehouse. Yeah, with Shemansky, it's like that's someone who actually cared about her mm -hmm. and wanted to see her succeed and do well. That's why he hooked her up with a fucking billionaire. And he admitted that it probably wasn't the best idea to be a friend and manager. Yeah, for sure. Because he yeah. cared too much. Yeah. He said that you need that distance. You need that separation as yep. a manager. Kind of coldness and, yeah. But anyway, despite all that, the album is coming along. Uh, it's very personal to her. A lot of the songs were about her breakup with Blake. Ugh. Apparently that inspired her to write a lot. Wow. He was good for something, at least. Imagine being such a trash bag and having these beautiful songs written about you because the yeah. person whose heart you broke is actually really talented. Yeah, like, hey, I wrote a song about you. It's called Back to Black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning my mood. Yeah. Black. <laughs> So at a recording session at Metropolis Studios, Amy started drinking. She was drinking multiple glasses of whiskey and Coke. It's not good for that, <laughs> for, yeah. for singing. Like, it fucks with your voice, yep. and it probably makes her slur a little bit. 
people say they saw her eat a massive plate of food and then suddenly she disappeared for a while. Well, the studio manager found that she had thrown everything up in the bathroom. Yeah. So there were colors everywhere on the towel rack, on the floor, just colored vomit. So so she didn't like make it into the toilet? It was everywhere. Like it looked like a tornado went through there. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly the bulimia was always an issue with her and now it's back in full force. Yeah. So she had it under control for a little while, but now it's back to being out of control. I'll never get that psycho like the the thought process going into that. Like why bother eating the food in the first place? Because then you can eat the food. It'll satiate your primal need to be fed. So like you can have the Big Mac, then you can throw it up and then still be skinny and eat the Big Mac. Yeah. Okay. It's a cheat code. Yeah, if you just really like eating the Big Mac. It's amazing how the parents, you know, from the 90s, 80s on down, it's like anything that horrible that your kid's doing, you just, or that you would assume is horrible, it's like, oh, it's just a phase. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, this is a part of someone's psychology. It's yeah. not going to go away unless they seek help for it. You have to deal with it right away. Yeah. Really, when you boil it down, she's incredibly self-conscious, not only about her appearance, but about her singing as well. Crazy. And I have a little clip of that. These are from the recording sessions of Back to Black, the album. Upsetting at the end, isn't it? And here's another take from another song. Is that alright? So she lays down an incredible vocal, and then she's like, "Is that alright?" Yeah. The the booze and the over drinking leads to more paranoia and it throws you off your game a little bit. Like you're not really taking in what you're doing as as well as you would if if that wasn't present. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like same thing with like Chris Farley. You know, he would always go up to people and be like, "Am I really funny?" It's crazy. And like, and like meanwhile, he's like the funniest person in the world. But you just kind of you're that receptor where you know like the reality of what's going on or how yeah. people are accepting what you're doing is like thrown off. Yeah, people would kill to have the level of talent that they just had naturally. Yeah, and they're still self conscious about it. Like it's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And with the new album, Amy changed her image. She appeared with a new look, 1960s girl group singer. Yeah. I know I know she was a fan of like those girl group uh like bands and stuff, which you know, I like them too, like the leader of the pack and like mm-hmm. uh, like the the Ronettes and stuff. Exactly. It is the Ronettes, specifically Ronnie Spector. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's the same beehive haircut which is called the B52. Oh, really? really? Not based on the the Fred Schneider band. No, that that was Get based your on jukebox money. The whole shack shimmy. <laughs> Rock lobster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was based on the hairstyle, the yeah. name of the oh, band. Oh, okay. Wow. And guess who came back into the picture? Uh, Shmolensky? Blake. 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 Oh, no. And he decided, you know what? He I'm... got a new hat. Oh, oh he's got a worse hat. Like worse. I'm going to have my own bold look, too. Oh, so he started wearing God. fedoras and suits. Just when See, he thought this guy couldn't find a shittier hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Think> again. <laughs> so in October 2006, Back to Black, the second album from Amy Winehouse, hits shelves. Critics call it a modern masterpiece. Yep. As I mentioned, inspired by her relationship with that moron Blake. Yeah. Their first breakup. And uh, her management and friends were pushing her to go to rehab. So she turned that into the hit novelty song, Mm -hmm. which she says that she wrote in 20 minutes. They always say that, though. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I wrote Imagine in five minutes. Yeah. Bullshit. On a napkin. Imagine that. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> shitting. <laughs> yeah. They never say, it took me two weeks to get the lyrics right. And It takes me all day to write an introduction sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Be honest, people. Yeah. It's a great song, though. Yeah. Jazz, R&B, soul, all in one, and her own soul. Nice. There you go. 
<laughs> Freeze on that for another 20 minutes. I said, Soul. <laughs> Sold 16 copies. 16, 16 copies. Wow. wow. That, that really took that a shit. Under sells. Yeah. That's, I expected more. I, maybe 17. Yeah. She's the only one that bought it. Yeah. Over yeah. and over. 16 million copies worldwide. If and you did that today, you'd, you know, you'd be the richest person in the world or something. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In Pitchfork, the reviewer said, Winehouse has been blessed by a brassy voice that can transform even mundane sentiments into powerful statements. It's true. Pitchfork, that's what I actually trusted what they said. Yeah, they were the cool publication. Yeah, they kind of came around and just say, use the word alty or indie. That was kind of their... That was their bread and butter. That was yeah. Their, yeah, that was their desk or whatever. So Amy started to unravel as she was becoming a household name. She started to rely on alcohol to deal with her stress and her relationship troubles with Blake. She was too drunk to perform at several clubs and media appearances. Damn. So she would just drink on stage. She started doing that in the studio, also while performing, which yeah. never works out. No. And for her own health... Maybe she was becoming too famous. Perhaps a smaller scale was better for her. That's what her pianist, Sam Best, thought. Mm. And I have a clip of that. Yeah. Amy used to always say to me that that was her dream, really, to, to do those sorts of shows, to play in jazz clubs to small audiences. She had one of the most pure relationships to music, such an emotional relationship to music. Like she needed music as if it was a person and that she would die for it. Mm. So that's intense. Yeah. There's a lot going on and she's probably just asking herself, how did I get here? Like yeah. that Talking head song. How did I get here? Yeah. And then bad press just starts coming in. Well, the you know, these uh, the tabloid industry in Britain is particularly ruthless and they... Something has to fill that vacuum of all this shit. They, they need to fill their newspapers and sell ads and stuff. And it's, you know, an industry. Like yeah. everything. Like it, she's, she's like being fed off of like three industries right now. Like music. That's a good word. What? <laughs> industry. Yeah. But all... she's also an industry. Yeah. Yeah. She sells papers. Yeah. She was already known as a drunk at this point. Yeah. yeah. Before she even arrived, she was already known as... Well, they saw her coming a mile away. So they're like, she's going to be perfect for everything. You know, she's Train gonna... wreck. Yeah. Apparently, she was in talks to do the song for Quantum of Solace, the Bond film. Oh, that's yeah. right. Is that the one that eventually went to Adele? No. Jack White and Alicia Keys. Really? Yeah. Not a very memorable one. I don't no. Think. Yeah. <laughs> Not the Adele one. I remember that Adele one. That was reason. Skyfall, Skyfall yeah. in 2012. They must pay oh. a pretty good buck for that. Yeah, and it's also an honor, right? Yeah. Because we grew up with the Bond movies. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And to do a Bond film, that was cool. I th Quantum Assault was okay. I like the one. The, it the wasn't that good. No? No. I mean, I don't remember it that well. Yeah. I like some of the Daniel Craig ones. Kind of a snooze fest. Really? Well, Amy couldn't really perform when she was working out that song. And according to Barbara Broccoli, because it's the Broccoli family, they own the rights to the Bond films. Famous, famous yeah. family that own the rights, yeah. She said, quote, that was a very, very distressing meeting. She was not at her best and my heart really went out to her. Really? Wow. So she must have been a disaster in yeah. like some boardroom with the Broccoli family. It was wow. like, yeah, I think we're, we're going to go in a different direction. Yeah, so that project fell through. In May 2007, she snuck off to Miami again to get away from the media circus. Yeah, to get her head back on. Yeah, and secretly <laughs> married Blake. Ugh. Oh, my God. So now it's official. They got hitched. Yeah, he but made an honest woman out of her, Kyle. Can you legally get married in Miami? Like, is it yeah. really legal if you get married there? She looks miserable. Yeah, she does he looks not look over happy. the moon. Yeah, he's pissed. He he smells money probably oh, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's like, I'm made for life. Yeah. So she returned to the public scene looking a little better than she had been. Yeah. Because I guess you know, vacation does wonders for some people. I guess Miami, yeah. 
But then things turned. Shortly thereafter, she started using crack, cocaine, and heroin. That's not something you just start. Yeah. That is like, I think she was doing cocaine this whole time. No. Yeah, I think you're right. I no. think you're right. Blake admitted that he introduced her to the hard drugs, and it was then that she started doing it because he was smoking a 10-pound batch of heroin in a London hotel room, and then she sees him doing it, and she's like, I want to try that. Oh and then he's like, God. okay, and he gave it to her. He gave some of the 10 pounds of, of crack he had? Yes. Oh, geez, what a nice guy. He's a mensch, as yeah. they say. So, yeah, and she already has an addictive personality. Yeah. Instant addict. Crack, well, that's cocaine, crack and w. heroin. They, these drugs became an everyday part of their relationship from that point on. Man. Oh, my God. It, looking at that picture of them getting married, they don't look like that type of couple. They look like they're they're quirky for sure, but they don't look like they're <laughs> slamming crack and heroin no, right not after at all. this. Anybody yeah. can look okay in their wedding photo. No, I know. Oh. But like, it, it doesn't, I, I'm sure he's like covered in tattoos under that cheap suit. Oh, big time, yeah. So, yeah, they're codependents to each other. This looks a little more... The, more representative yeah. of what's going on there. Was he wearing a bulletproof vest? No, just another wife beater. Yeah. Different color. Same shit, different toilet. Well, I think she just likes the bad boys. I think that's what it is. And yeah, mm -hmm. he, it, That's exactly what it is. And she would emulate his behavior because it's that classic thing like, why are you so obsessed with this loser? Yeah. yeah. Why do you want to be with him and throw things away for him? Because she didn't have a father figure. And this guy there you go. matches the same persona of her dad also. Minus the cab driving, I guess. Yeah, this guy keeps the meter running, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's on her. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like definitely the hat. Definitely looks like... He does look like a cab driver. Yeah. So the press, they become her mortal enemy. And she's a target. A constant target. But I'm sure she pushes them a little bit, too. Of course. She's, like, spitting in their faces and they're, like, breaking their cameras and stuff. And so let's go to July 2007... She's booked at Lollapalooza in Chicago. I went the two years before this, but not, wow. not this year, a unfortunately. personal touch here. Yeah. Amy had a seizure before her performance, causing her to be 15 minutes late. Jesus. And Surprisingly, only 15 minutes. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> the day before had been a heroin and crack binge. Blake said, quote, I was there when Amy suffered her first seizure. I still break down thinking about it. Do, we yeah. had been taking drugs all day long. Then my wife just started shaking violently in front of me. I started crying and I lay her down in the recovery position. I cleared her airways to make sure she wasn't choking. Oh, what a nice guy. What a mensch, yeah. Her Lala performance drew huge crowds. But a review from New Musical Express noted that she appeared preoccupied during her set and seemed eager to get through it quickly. And I have a little clip of it. She just had a seizure. Well, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. I paired it with her earlier appearance from the David Letterman show. Mm. Just to show that it was a little more polished on Letterman. Wow. She was a little fresher a couple months before. So you, yeah, it's a totally different mood. Yeah, even in yeah, the she looked clip. like a mess on the Lollapalooza stage. Yeah, and as a side note, at that same festival, Lollapalooza 2007, a singer billed as Stephanie Germanata made her debut. Who the hell's that? Otherwise known as Lady Gaga. Oh. Gaga. <laughs> All we need is it was Lady the, Gaga. -ga. It was the smallest stage. And she's in her underwear? <laughs> yeah. What the hell's going on? That's early Gaga. <laughs> What's she doing? She's yeah. like wearing a belt on her bikini. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a belt on the bikini, babe. I'm like Dennis Miller. <laughs> so this is pre-monsters. Belt tighter than Putin's grip on the crane, babe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Barishnikov on a Saturday night at the fucking ballet park. <laughs> he just says not making any sense. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, he had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's it like when Dennis Miller's having a stroke? He's doing it again. <laughs> it's tighter than Gandhi's uh, enlightenment, babe. <laughs> like, what? Is that why? Is that tight? 
<laughs> I'm just saying world leader names. Oh my god! And obscure little things about them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> in a profile in Spin Magazine, another hip music publication, she said, quote, in the interview, I don't care about any of this, and I don't have much of an opinion of myself. I don't think people care about me, and I'm not in this to be a fucking role model. I made an album I'm very proud of, and that's about it. Yeah, she's kind of doing the Charles Barkley thing where I'm not a role model. Mm -hmm. Well, it's terrible. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible for a role model. <laughs> By August 2007, she was in a really bad way. She OD'd. Mm. And according to a doctor, with the amount of crack, cocaine, heroin, and alcohol in her system, it's amazing that she wasn't in a coma. Jesus. Her dad, Mitch, staged an intervention. Finally. So now he says, go to rehab, you're not fine. Yeah, when he sees how much money's coming in. So they're trying to get her to go to rehab, but Amy says she has to get back to the United States to perform more gigs. And her manager tells her concerned friends, girls, there are a lot of professionals who function on this stuff. Yeah, but some are better at it. Yeah. yeah. That's just a... A fact. It's, right. uh, it's, it's not working. It's not. Yeah, it's not working for you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, everyone goes by that Keith Richards, you know, model of yeah, just smoke all the crack you want and get up on stage until you're eighty. Uh, whatever he did worked out for him. Yeah. And only him. And only him. It yeah. seems like yeah. So she canceled a string of concerts due to health issues, and Blake and Amy had this idea that they're going to go into rehab together. Which yeah, is a right. terrible it's idea. The worst idea. Couples ever. rehab, yeah. That's it, what uh, Tom Arnold and Roseanne tried to do. That worked out great. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah, just don't take their parking spot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck parked in my spot? <laughs> oh, say can you say? <laughs> she, she's mooning <laughs> us again. <laughs> <laughs> so they both went to the Causeway Retreat on OC Island. But they left after three days and went on another bench. Mm. He cut his arm, and then she cut her arm with a bottle to copy him, telling him, I'll do anything you do. That's Jesus weird. Christ. And as if you didn't hate this guy enough, he would sell stories to the press for money. Of course oh he would. Oh, my God. And Amy always forgave him. And do you see this picture? Cocaine. Yeah, this is from their flat. And do you see what they're doing cocaine on? Extras. <laughs> the Extras DVD. Yep. What, the, the Ricky Gervais show? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know you've made it when. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, there's one of those episodes in there could have been the David Bowie one, that ba Banana Facal, You're a Fat Waste of Space. <laughs> That's <laughs> a classic, that yeah. yeah. So a photo surfaced of Amy covered in blood, and... She had blood on her toes. Jesus. So speculation is that she was injecting heroin between Ooh, her toes. Fuck. And in other photos, cuts on her arms were visible. People think she was self-harming. Or or well, she was she was injecting into her arms. Their eyes look so wired. I think they were injecting uh Coke. Yeah. At some point you your veins get really used up on your arms, so that's why people go in between the toes. Yeah, their and eyes they, are way too wired. These people look like a fucking mess. That is uppers, yeah. But yeah, they are yo, fucked. man, those eyes are wide open. Yeah. And that's how they went out. Oh, yeah. my God. Imagine yeah. inside their flat. They're just headed to Cheesecake Factory there. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. covered in blood. Look to at meet them. the Menendez <laughs> yeah. brothers. We're ready to go out. <laughs> this is insane. I'm ready if you are. Of course, he's got a fucking head on. Wow. I imagine what's under that. He's just got a T-shirt tied around mm. his neck for some reason. Weird. So Amy admitted that the practice of cutting herself had started out as a morbid curiosity, but then became a real way to deal with her stress, which only intensified with the use of alcohol. The record company was starting to give up on her. At they some point, you're like, I, I don't want to, like, enough's enough. You know? In terms of the next album. Because usually you start thinking about the third album now, but they're not putting too much pressure on her because it's so clearly She's not... about to break. Yeah, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. So they're just like, you know what? Forget it. October 2007, they're arrested in Norway for marijuana possession. 
they that, add seven grams to on their it. to their credit. That's kind of bullshit. Like, no, I know. Why does Norway care about people with weed? But it's just yeah. more trouble. They had they keep finding trouble. Sure. Yeah. And soon after, less than a month later, Blake was sentenced to jail for twenty seven months for the assault of a bar owner and attempted bribery to cover the incident up. So he's in jail. He goes Good. to jail. For bribery? Yeah. That's hilarious. An assault in a bad hat. Yeah. Thus begins a down... That sucks. You gotta go to prison. (laughs) Felony shitty hat. Yeah. (laughs) And he can't wear that hat in prison. (laughs) Two counts of shitty hat. Don't drop the hat. (laughs) Don't drop the hat in the shower. Yeah. (laughs) And... (laughs) He's kicking it around. (laughs) Slipping through his hands. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The hat! (laughs) (laughs) The lights go out. Are you the motherfucker with the hat? (laughs) (laughs) We got a message for you. (laughs) That's our hat. Now. Bend over, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got another method for you. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately, we're transitioning to Amy's lowest point. Oh mm-hmm. no. Okay, let's get to hers. Even though it's good he went to prison, it starts a downward spiral from her, even from where she was at. Oh my god. So 2008 begins at her lowest point. She's beyond a tabloid joke. She was known as Amy Crackhouse. See, that's mm-hmm. what the Sun's good at. These little witty uh, titles. And yeah, lines. New York Post type. Yeah, hilarious. Yeah, witty in quotes. Yeah, yeah, like 9-11 puns and shit. Yeah. And the Sun published a video showing her smoking crack. Then the record company said, look, Grammys are coming up. You need to get clean. So they actually make her sign a... She's like ca- a Grammy of heroin or a Grammy of crack? <laughs> How many Grammys are we talking? I'm gonna go to Miami. Got, <laughs> got seven Grammys in me purse. Yeah. <laughs> in it. So get a Grammy in Miami. They make a, get a Grammy bum. You know what I mean? A contract. Oh, contract. And okay. she signs it, saying that she's gonna get clean for the Grammy. Scouts honor. Uh huh. Yeah. And she does. Wow. She actually pulls it off because it's not that long till the Grammys. It's like early February. Yeah. So, so the Grammys does, like see a. Potential problem coming. They try to head it off by this contract. Well, the record company. Oh, yeah. the record yeah. company. Yeah, we okay. make us look good, okay? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazily enough, she pulls it off. Like she wow. looked good at the Grammys. She performed a song via satellite from London. That's she, also she, a good idea. She did it by Zoom. Yeah. And as you can see in this picture, her having like breakfast with her friends. Yeah. Every minute of her life is being photographed now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So she cannot lay low and hide because these anywhere. photographs, you know, any if I was a janitor in like some of these places, I would definitely sell these photographs, <laughs> make it like minimum wage. Mark the janitor. Yeah, he just has a camera. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> another Blake over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying, I'm trying to get in the mindset of what how like so many pictures like surface all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. It's an easy sell if you're a janitor. And yeah, you have a picture of Amy Winehouse smoking crack. You it, it'll land you like. Ten thousand dollars or something. Well, that's the thing with these like TMZ type outfits. All these companies like they'll kind of hold your hand and make you look like an industry industry darling if you're taking care of them and posing for the camera, letting them know where you're gonna be and blah blah blah. But if you start blowing them off and pissing them off and breaking their cameras and being like, "Go fuck off," and pissing, they on will them. literally photograph every second of your life and make money off it. it no matter if you look good, bad, it doesn't matter. So you think it's better to, to make friends and to like... Yeah, uh, it's like a know. necessary evil. Yeah. Being like, yeah, I guess... And do know. the dog and pony show. Like, hey, yeah. I'm going to be at uh, Erewhon later and uh, take some pictures of me, please. Yeah, because it's nothing personal at first. It's business. Strictly and business. Strictly business. But when you're getting to the point where you're like, fuck off, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And, and I'm sure like, we'll make your life a living hell. They're on these every second of drugged up tirades, and they're just like going ham on these, uh, you know, photographers yeah. and stuff. So that gets around. They have a tight knit circle of people that are that know how to fuck you very badly. Yeah. So as I mentioned, she did get clean for the Grammys. What do you think? You see that picture? I mean, yeah, she looks like herself. She does. She looks like she has, you know, life in her eyes again from yeah. this picture. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Like five minutes before, that's what she looked like. And then by <laughs> Grammy night, she she's cleans the up star. Nice. Yeah. 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 She performed via satellite from London, went on to win record and song of the year. Wow. 
Seven total, I believe, which is a record number of wins for a British female act, according to the Guinness Book of Records. Wow. Mm. I think Adele almost matched that with her 21 record. Yeah. Wow. She might have beat it, actually. That's the third time I brought up Adele. I'm an Adele head, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, you are. I have a little commentary on Adele. I was going to say it at the end, but I guess I could say it now. Let's go. I feel like Amy Winehouse died, so Adele could live and become Hot a take. superstar. Wow, scorching take. Wow. I'm glad you brought that up. And but enough about that. that. Okay. Sadly, on Grammy night, Juliet, her good friend, is there. And she's like, this is so exciting, Amy. Congratulations. And then Amy told her, ugh, this is so boring without drugs. Wow. Three days later, Amy was back to drugs. Jesus. And then in May 2008, this bizarre video was published on YouTube showing her hanging out with Pete Doherty. Hmm. The scumbag who dated Kate Moss, remember? Yeah, I remember that guy. He was a tall, weird-looking guy. He looked like he was drugged out in every... I remember, he not the baby shambles, but he did a band before that that was really good. Right. No, he had some cred as an indie musician. Yeah. He was part of that scene. Like He kind of knew Blake. They were part of that scene that said, fuck off if you signed with a record label. Yeah. That was his take. That's and a big time take. drug addict. Too. Yeah, he was like a maniac, this yes. guy. He's another one that he just looks <laughs> like he smells like shit. I think that's a, <laughs> a type of dude in Britain, just mm-hmm. like messed up on crack and like into indie rock music. Jesus. So a video. The Libertines, that's the name of the band. Oh, The, the Libertines. Libertines. Yeah, that's Can't right. Stand Me Now is a great song. Anyway, go ahead. Blake is in jail, remember? Look at those teeth. So they kind of begin having an affair. So she's, she throws one loser to the side. It's a lateral move. Hanging yeah. out with another loser. Yeah. And then this video is published on YouTube, May 2008, where they're playing with baby mice. And they just seem extremely high. Mm. You be the judge. Is Baby Nice a band, Baby Mice, or is that oh, a you'll actual, find out. actual Baby Mice? I have the clip here. Oh, okay. It's about to be answered. I'm going to go ahead and say actual Baby Mice. Yeah. I thought it was a band that opened it up for, you know, the Strokes or something. Ladies and gentlemen, Baby <laughs> Mice! Who should I call my Oh, my God. Let's go psychedelic. For the rest of them. I think there's a pal. There's the teeth. What? The f- actual baby mice. They okay. look like little gherkins. Daddy. Hey, pups. Why is his Excuse fingers me. so dirty? Oh my dirty? god. What, what? Is this like a a black room where you like develop film or something? Why are they in there? <laughs> Man, his finger, he looks like he was mining coal for yeah. 30 years. With that his looks like, like a ransom video for the baby mice. Yeah, you got your fucking baby <laughs> mice. And I don't know if you heard her. She said, <laughs> And I got a message for Blake in jail. And she picks up the mouse, Don't leave Amy, don't divorce Amy. Oh my god. And I like how you asked, Why are junkies' fingers so dirty? <laughs> yeah, why would they ever be clean, Kyle? It just looked like he was like grinding dirt with his hands. There was so much dirt in yeah. his fingernails that was disturbing. There was more dirt than hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was more Doherty than Pete. You know? <laughs> yeah. So dirty Doherty. Dirty Doherty in the <laughs> Now we got full blown drug addiction plus the bulimia. She's skinny and frail, and she's pushing her body to the limits, yeah. the absolute limits. And we know she's had seizures before. Yeah. One of the doctors said one more seizure, and that's it. The drugs yeah. will give you seizures. The bulimia will give you seizures on their own. If you're doing both of them, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's a time bomb. And in late 2008, Amy disclosed that she had early stage emphysema. Jesus Christ. From smoking? From smoking crack and heroin, Mm -hmm. dude. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. And she would drink vodka all day. (sighs) And she claimed that alcohol was worse than heroin for her. I've heard that theory before. I'm going to go ahead and say no. Yes. No, no, no. (laughs) Yeah. 
And in January 2009, by this point, Grammys are over. The buzz from her album has worn off. Yeah. The paparazzi is still after her, but also people are becoming less interested. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, people have moved on at this point. Yeah, yeah they're seeing someone stumble around and not be able to perform. And it's like, like, at some point, okay, we're going to move on to Adele. Yeah, you're wasting <laughs> Yeah. <it. laughs> So she goes on a two-month getaway to the Caribbean island of St. Lucia. As you can see in these pictures, she actually starts looking better. She gains some weight and stops with the crack cocaine and heroin. I think she she should have just gotten away from London. I feel like that as a city is just very bad for her. Yeah. Some people have cities where they just can't stop doing it. Like some people go to New York and just become the biggest drunks of their lives and then yeah. they move to L.A. and... They get into like yoga and, sh- and shit, but like which is worse? Yeah, the access. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's some place they're comfortable and they have a lot of access. Access, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's to, all it to is. drugs. Yeah. yeah, the old haunts. Because yeah. if you if you just the got ghouls. dropped in a brand new city, you're you're not gonna have a a crack connect right away. Yeah, and luckily one of her old ghouls is still in prison. Like, yeah, Amy did keep on drinking though mm. during this getaway. The drinking really was out of control for her always. Yeah. So her dad, let's talk about his intentions. Mitch. Mitch is there, but he brought a camera crew because he's (laughs) filming footage for a TV show called My Daughter Amy that was going to be broadcast in the UK. What a scoundrel. And I have a clip from his Did she know she got signed up for that? Yes. She adored her dad, but she was annoyed at this camera crew. So here's footage from it where these people want an autograph from her. I'll ask her. Amy, how do you do it? Just push an older button. I'm really sorry. Okay. Is that all right? Listen, if you're that sorry, then you won't listen. I've got a lovely shirt on. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? Pleasure. Thank Absolutely. You. Okay. You know, I've got to say, why have you got to make a comment like that? Why is it? Why? Why? Why have you got to do that? So long have you made a mug out of that? A mug of? They asked to take a picture of you. No, Richard, I don't no, no, want you no, to do dad, this. Dad, no, Dad, no, Dad. You're going to make a mug of me. No. Be nice to me on camera then. So she points to the camera while they're having that argument. While he's saying you should be nicer to your fans. Yeah. She points to the camera like, what are you trying to make me look bad? Yeah. So she's not comfortable with it being Well, he's, he's trying to do some like some Osborne family type shit. Like, uh, clearly he, he wants it to catch fire so he can make a ton of money. Yeah, he could be the creator of the show and make the money that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. That way he's like making his own thing. Yeah, he, yeah exactly. Making his own yeah. way. I think some people like this, he doesn't want to just take handouts because he feels like a scoundrel. So he's like, oh, no, I'm doing a lot of these other things. Yeah, that I'd rather are, subject you to this, this bullshit. Yeah. Like he, the low hands. Yeah. Remember Lindsay Lohan? Lohan's mom and dad. Didn't they have E-shows or something? Yeah, they were always selling something. Yeah. Yeah. So Blake saw paparazzi photos of Amy with another man on the beach from jail. (laughs) And this leads to a heated divorce. Mm. Amy wrote a poem, and one of the lines is, you always hurt the ones you love. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. So Blake and her are over. And officially, officially, he went on to get married and have a child with somebody else. Ouch. And this was heartbreaking for Amy because she had wanted to be a wife and mother. The fact that he went and did it with somebody else when they were supposed to be soulmates devastated her. Yeah. I wonder if he got a big payday from her. He didn't. Specifically, I know that. Good. Really? He said during the divorce he didn't want a dime from her. Wow. Wow. I, I, I did not anticipate that. He didn't want a pound from her, as they say yeah. in wow. the UK. He didn't, uh, I guess he wants to pay for his own hats. Yeah. <laughs> These are my hats. <laughs> and then no, another person she cut ties with was Mark Ronson. What? Because in an interview, she thought he took too much credit for the album Back to Black. I did see that, yeah. That's brutal. Mm -hmm. I mean, they both helped each other immensely. Yes. Uh, Well, he's the one that probably organized all the the genius into this great album. And, you know, without him, you know, 
she would not be able to do that on her own. Clearly. She had a hit album without him. Yeah. Um, there is some other crossover between this and the Lohan thing. His sister, Sam Ronson, who is a DJ, actually dated uh, Lindsay Lohan after all that drama you know, it happened with her in like the late 2000s. Oh, so wow. you're right. Yeah, I remember that now. And that Sam Ronson, she wore stupid hats too. Oh. Just uh, and bring a full circle. Perez Hilton would always make fun of her. Oh yeah, he was brutal in those. <laughs> he called like, her a man. He was out of his oh, fucking gosh. mind. That guy. Yeah. <laughs> and really? probably Amy Winehouse, he wasn't kind to either. Or Britney Spears. Yeah, he drew dicks on their faces. Yeah, yeah, that guy was brutal. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guy was out of pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of the year, 2009, Amy's getting into trouble. There's legal disputes, arrests, drunken misdemeanors. One example here is from the New York Post. She was charged with assault. Mm. It says that she... Oh, she was heckling somebody at a performance. Wow. And it resulted in a fight. Like her the, opener? Or the like... staff at the theater. No, not. She wasn't touring or anything. <laughs> She's just going, getting into trouble. She's just, just yeah. picking fights in public? Exactly. You know, this has happened, we've seen with superstars like George Michael, where they just can't stop finding trouble. Yeah. yeah. Moths to a flame. Well, the, I think they're addicted to that response that they've gotten. And, they, you, you know, just to go insane and then see what the tabloids have to say about the next morning, maybe there's a rush to that. Yeah. Not yeah. to say that she loves it, but, you know, maybe she missed something about it. Mm-hmm. Going to smoke crack with her boyfriend and then seeing it on page one the next day. Right. In 2010, she started becoming close with her bodyguard, Andrew Morris, and he called himself a no guy. A what? As in, you know, like, yes, man. Oh, a no, man. Okay. He would tell her no. Yeah. Well, that's what she needs someone to do. The next year in March 2011, Amy starts to clean up her act a bit. And she recorded a duet with her idol, Tony Bennett. Really? Yes. Oh, he was doing all, all those duets, you know, yeah. towards the end of his career there. His son orchestrated all those. Okay. Oh, wow. And gave him a whole final act. He's yeah. still around. Yeah. He yeah, did he, a whole album with uh, Miss Gaga. He did. There's another person that benefited from Tony Miss benefited. Winehouse is passing. Luck be a Gaga tonight. <laughs> all right. So here's a clip of her in the studio with her idol. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. He loves his heart in San Francisco, this guy. When I heard Amy Winehouse, I immediately said, this one's got it. Everybody just said, oh, I don't know how you're going to handle her. What do you want to be? I'll be here in your room. Okay. He's like, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) I'm dying. I've never done anything like this. In which way? To sing with one of my idols. Oh, no. And have it. <laughs> no. no. Where am I? But it's good. It's good. It's good. Who are you? Because then I can make my dad jealous after when I show him <laughs> when he sees it. Oh, I get pretending it looks like an ending yeah. unless I could have one more chance to prove that. My sorry, life. sorry, that was me. I was terrible. I was terrible. No, no, no. I don't want to waste your time. I don't no, want to waste your time. It's getting better each time. No, really. You I, don't, I just don't want to waste your time. So she was always like that. Yeah. She really wasn't sure. And you can hear the beauty in her voice there, but... And a lot of people love that single. Yeah. It's Body and Soul from Tony Bennett's Duets album. Mm. I find it a little messy... It's kind of a lot of that throughout the song. like uh, Yeah, doing some runs and stuff for <laughs> yeah. no reason. But maybe she's not getting the direction she needs there from whatever. Whoever, Tony Bennett? From the, or from their son. Tony Bennett's son. Oh, who, right, who, right. producing it, yeah. I think it was in the land of good enough. Yeah. So they're like, all right, let's just get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amy was over the moon afterwards, and she wanted to start a jazz super group with Questlove and Yasin Bey. Wow, that would be crazy. Yeah. Formerly awesome. Most Def. Yeah. yeah. I guess that happened a while ago. 
Does wow. everyone know him as Yasin Bey officially now? Not really, no. Okay. Everyone so still he, calls him Most Def. Yeah, I, I just know him as Most Def. Yeah. Amy started dating a new guy named Reg Travis. Let's take a look at him compared to Blake. <laughs> Night and day. Still not the type of guy you would expect him to be. Kind of looks like Will Wheaton, though. Yeah. He looks like a nice enough guy. He's well, like Wheaton's a, nice a good fella. guy, yeah. So Amy would have good periods. She could go a month with no alcohol. In May 2011, Amy goes back to rehab for alcohol addiction. So mm. she could be clean, but when she drank, it was bad. But she checks out early, after six days, and announces a European comeback to her, mm. which I believe was pressure from her management. Because privately... She really didn't want to go back to that back to black well. Yeah. Because imagine she doesn't have that big of a catalog. So for her to tour without a new album, she has to sing all those other songs like Rehab. Yeah, yeah. it's all actual heartbreak. <laughs> yeah. And Amy got wasted in anticipation of the upcoming concerts. Mm. In fact, she passed out, woke up at the airport, and then was put on a private jet. This is bad. It kind of seems like those Michael Jackson years when he just didn't want to be touring. and yeah. he, like, he had no reason to. He had no new album. And even the, the newer albums he had done are just terrible songs that not no one would even... If you played them at his concert, they go. people would go to the bathroom and yeah. come back yeah. to the better ones. <laughs> so her first show was June 18th, 2011, Belgrade, Serbia. And it was a nightmare. She could hardly stand up. She was slurring the lyrics, and she couldn't even get through one song. Oh, man. Jeez. She was too drunk to perform. The crowd booed her off the stage. Wow. And here I have a clip from that concert. <laughs> so as you can see, she stumbles on. She sits down. Oh, wow. And this is after some time. She's standing by the mic. The crowd is yelling at her to sing, and she just looks completely uninterested. Yeah. She, she doesn't, doesn't she end doesn't up. She doesn't seem like she's like that worried about the situation, just from her body language. Because she's drunk. She seemed yeah. confused when people started booing. Yeah. Like, I don't think she realized how long it took her to actually get out there and do something. Jesus. Yeah, so the tour was subsequently canceled. She didn't end up performing that night. Jeez. And it was her last onstage appearance. Wow, ever. Ever. Jesus. So she didn't care anymore and was willing to sabotage everything. Mm -hmm. Her career, her friends, her life. She returns home to Camden in London to get better. She makes a couple of phone calls to friends promising that she wants a better future for herself. She had been regularly seeing doctors and was an outpatient of the Priory a rehab facility. She tells her friends that the bad news is the tour is canceled. But the good news is she can now go to Nick Shemansky's wedding. Remember him? Yeah. Her friend and first manager. Mm -hmm. And the wedding was scheduled for July 24th, 2011. Oh, shit. Imagine, like, obviously, you know, something else happened, but... <laughs> That's a, you're really rolling the dice by having Amy Winehouse at your wedding. You know, it, it could go any way. Like, <laughs> you don't want her to give the toast. <laughs> yeah, you know? maybe not. I don't know. Friday, July 22nd, 2011. She and her bodyguard, Andrew Morris, stay up late watching YouTube videos of her best performances from the early days. And she says to Andrew, boy, I can really sing he remembers that she was in a good mood, hmm. but she was not sober. Hmm. Saturday, July 23rd, 2011. Andrew Morris checks on Amy around 10 a.m., but she's still sleeping. Empty vodka bottles are scattered on the floor. Bottles? Jesus. Nothing unusual after a night of drinking, he thinks to himself. So at 3 p.m., he goes to check on her again and finds her still in bed in the same position. So alarm bells go off in his head. He checks her pulse and there isn't one. 
So now he calls for help, and the paramedics arrive shortly before 4 p.m. She's pronounced dead at the scene. Man. Mm. It was a combination of eating disorders and alcohol poisoning. Her heart just stopped. She had a blood alcohol level of 0.416. Oh, my God. More than five times the legal driving limit in England. That is up there. And then people came to find out that she spent her last two days drinking an excessive amount of alcohol after a two-week period of abstinence. Mm. According to the coroner's report, her official cause of death was alcohol toxicity, And it was recorded as death by misadventure with no suspicious circumstances. Same thing with Brian Jones? Yeah. And misadventure, to remind everybody, it's an accidental death caused by voluntary risk. Yeah. And El Duce. Yes. 0.416, that like 0.08 is the legal driving uh, limit in America. So just to give you an idea of how wildly excessive that is. Yeah. And her death gave her membership into the exclusive 27 Club. Yeah, that's brutal. With Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, and Brian Jones. And Brian Jones himself, yeah. So they have a couple things in common there. The Misadventure and 27 Club. Yeah. Yeah. Blake got a lot of bad press after she died. Her former flame... The guy that introduced her to drugs. The guy that had the terrible hats. Blocky. But Blake's mom defended him in the press and said they were both enablers to each other. Oh, thanks, Mom. (laughs) I'd expect someone who gave birth to a person who loves that amount of shitty hats to say something like that. Do you think he came out of the womb with the shitty hat on? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Her pussy's a fedora. Fedora. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Stinks. Following... That'd be a good Amy Winehouse like, oh, yeah. Pussy is a fedora. Yeah, is this the follow up to Fuck Me Pump? <laughs> yeah. Pussy Fedora. Pussy Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> the My... singer of Pussy Fedora, Amy Winehouse. <laughs> Following her death, sales of Back to Black skyrocketed. So that should help fuel the conspiracy theorists who think artists are worth more dead than alive. Yeah, that's true. Maybe the record industry. It's not even a theory, it's a fact. The album. Island Records had her taken out. The album rose to number one on several charts worldwide. Man. And then in the wake of her death, the old Geeners, Mm. the gallows humor surrounding her, started to seem a little less funny. Yeah. Because she was a punchline for a number of years. Sure. And then I have a final clip here to show a couple of the style of jokes that were being said. You know, looking back, maybe it was in poor taste. Let's see what you think. This is from the documentary that I mentioned earlier, Amy, from 2015. For album of the year, Amy Winehouse for Back to Black. (laughs) The best female pop vocal performance. Is that George Lopez? Yeah. Rehab. Dave Grohl. Can somebody wake her up this afternoon around six and tell her? <laughs> Drunk ass. For best new artist, not- Suddenly it was cool to crack jokes about a bulimic's appearance or her drug addiction. According to contactmusic.com, Amy Winehouse's next album features songs about cooking, about cooking. That's oh, what you say. Say. Cooking crystal meth, black tar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such an oh. easy, stupid joke. I couldn't help myself when oh, I yeah. saw that. Hey, Kevin, you hear about this guy? <laughs> Jay Leno is used as the example <laughs> of how awful they were to her in the press. <laughs> yeah. And then one final joke I want to mention that perhaps was in poor taste. It's not even really a joke. In 2011, Neil Patrick Harris had a Halloween party, mm. and this was one of the dishes. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's a meat platter made of ribs and barbecue sauce what and fuck? sausage, and it's made to look like Amy Winehouse's corpse. What In the fact, fuck? That's, what? that's what the label says. It's Amy Winehouse's corpse. Jesus. Look at that old Twitter thing, too. Christ. Yeah. 
the old twit pic. Look at that, man. That looks so ancient these days. And this was 2011. This was a couple months after she died. Damn. And he oh put this on Twitter. Neil Patrick Harris did? Yeah, writing. Can you read that? What does he say? Look who showed up at Neil Patrick Harris's Halloween party last night. Looking good. Okay, so one of his friends did that or something. What a sick pup. So he's like retweeting Justin Makita. it. Yeah. Oh, that's his husband. Okay. Oh, God. He's since apologized for it. Yeah, that's brutal. Is that so, tweet still out there? In your opinions, was that in bad taste? And I'm not talking about the ribs. Yes. Uh, good. Nice. <laughs> um, I would say, I think words are just words. Like a joke is a joke, but this is like, there is planning. I don't know. This it, it's a We're little too a much for me. We're at a different time, you know. It's a, the the scene is very different in the comedy industry. And why would you want to eat that? It looks disgusting. Yeah. She had just died. I don't know. It seems like a little much to me. Yeah, it could have yeah. just been corpse, like generic yeah. corpse. Right, yeah. exactly. It would still be disgusting to eat. You don't have to but... call it her. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, back to the good stuff. This looks a little nicer. On September 14th, 2014, which would have been her 31st birthday, a memorial bronze statue was unveiled of her in Camden Town, North London. Wow. That's a nice tribute. They memorialize. That's pretty good. It's like, you know, that's when you know you made it. After you pass away, they, you know, they, they do something for you like that. They have something like that for Lucille Ball up, up in upstate New York, I think. Like yeah. Michael Jordan has uh, the thing in Chicago and, yeah. Freddie Mercury in Montreux, where mm -hmm. he did a lot of recording. Yeah. The Amy Winehouse Foundation was established in her honor after she died. Mm. I guess she had wanted to do it in her life as well. Mm. And that donates to music programs for kids and helps to make rehab programs more affordable for troubled youths. Good. That's good. And then a posthumous compilation album was released by Island Records in December 2011, featuring unreleased songs, covers, and specially selected demo tracks. Mm. The two singles from it were Body and Soul, the duet she did with Tony Bennett, mm -hmm. which did come out posthumously. Oh, oh wow. A month or two after she died. Jeez. And then the other one was Our Day Will Come, a reggae-tinged cover of the 1960s pop hit by Ruby and the Romantics. Oh, wow. And this is an awesome cover, and it's a good compilation album. Yeah. A portion of sales from the album went to the Amy Winehouse Foundation. And in pop culture, the documentary, which I've mentioned several times, released in 2015, won the Oscar for Best Documentary in wow. 2016. And there is an upcoming biopic. Who's going to be in that? <laughs> I have a picture here. Some people on Twitter think this is exploitative and that they're sensationalizing Amy's story. Of course story. it is. Because it, these it literally photos, is. yeah, it shows her like breaking down it's in front the, of the paparazzi it's the crying. definition of exploitative. Look at the actress. Who is this? I don't know. It's a nobody. Is it the same person who played Brittany Murphy? <laughs> yeah, this looks as good as that. Yeah. Marissa... Abela is her name. And I she really was, doesn't look I like... I thought that was the girl from uh, Mom, the TV show. Yeah. Um, Ryan, Ryan um, Reynolds' ex-wife. No, uh, um, Chris Pratt's. Chris Pratt's ex-wife. What's, What's her, her name? name? Anna yeah. Faris. Anna Faris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be wild it if they put like Anna Faris in this. It looks like Scary Movie 6. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like from the, okay. from the producers of Just Friends. So it does look terrible, but I'm not exactly outraged about it. Yeah. Yeah. Calm down, people. Pe I, they use that term very loosely. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to close this episode with a quote from Tony Bennett, what he wishes he had told Amy Winehouse. Mm -hmm. Slow down. You're too important. Life teaches you how to live it if you live long enough. It's a good Tony Bennett impression. That's coming from Tony Bennett, yeah. who's he still ticking. He left his heart in San Francisco, that guy. And his cum on your grandmother's back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe. R.I.P. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Amy Winehouse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is uh, very tragic. Final thoughts. Uh, I mean, all it takes is one bad guy to bring someone down. All, all it takes in, in but it anybody's been, life. It would have been another bad guy, though. It takes one bad person to ruin your fucking is life. Is he another Simon Monjack? Absolutely. You think because he introduced her to the hard drugs, and yeah. she probably wouldn't have gotten around to that. She probably would have been drinking and uh, trying some other stuff, but not like the, the, 
crack in the heroin is serious. That is so, yeah, it is beyond anything that's just like kind no, of no normal party, back. having fun type stuff. Yeah. Like cocaine, sure. Yeah, why not? But when you're smoking crack and smoking heroin, there's no coming back from heroin. Yeah. There's just none. Once you get a taste of it. it and is, crack, too, it, 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 yeah. it, it created to be addictive right off the bat. And it gave her emphysema before the time she was 26 years old. Like, that's yeah. insane. <laughs> that is, yeah. It, and and it, she started in her 20s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, dude, what the fuck were you putting in your body? Yeah, it's bad. You have no idea what that shit's cut with. And that guy kind of moved on and started a family, and, you know, he... He like had his dalliances with her, ruined her life, and then moved on. And yeah, he's no, okay he's now. Fine. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. What does he or... care? He's got a whole new collection of hats at this point. Yeah, he's got like a, his own <laughs> haberdashery, I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that manager's wedding, Nick Shermansky. Yeah. Was the next day. Oof. Yeah. That reminds me of when Clive Davis held that party that was supposed to be in Whitney's honor, and Whitney Houston died in that hotel room the same day. Yeah. Yeah. How do you go on with the event? <laughs> but in his case, Nick Shemansky's, you already have everything booked. You've planned this for so long. Yeah. And you weren't sure she was going to come anyway. Right. But still, what a cloud over that at the same time. You don't. You just don't mention it at the event, and then you talk about it afterwards or something. I don't know. Yeah. I it, mean, with, with someone like this, when you know them personally, I've had it happen in my life where you're prepared for that call at any time. And then when it happens, it's like, it's a horrible timing for them, obviously, but uh, it's like expectedly unexpected, yeah. or, or expectedly unexpected. I don't know. Yeah. However, you say that. You're but shocked, but not surprised. Exactly. You knew the other yeah. shoe was going to drop because it was going in that direction. Right. And it's yeah. very sad, but yeah. you the, you were at least half prepared for it. Mm-hmm. So. But what a talent. Absolutely. And she will forever be ingrained in pop culture, in the zeitgeist. Yeah. I think that song Rehab is a thing that they'll everyone will mm-hmm. remember. Yeah. Some people can't listen to that song anymore. It's tough knowing what's behind it and you know, yeah. how if she just did the story behind and it and stuck with it. Yeah. yeah, if she had said yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, <laughs> nice. it's not like she needed the drugs and alcohol. Some people swear up and down they're a tortured artist and they need to fuck up their life and sabotage themselves so they can have the, the pain to put into these songs. She was crushing it before she even was uh, drinking and drugging all the time. Yeah. Her first album was great. Her second album's amazing, too. But she did not need to, to have that to feed her music. To get messed mm-hmm. up. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for listening. Yeah. Kyle, do we have anything in the mailbag? We sure do. From our YouTube channel, which now we are up to over 7,000 people. Thank you guys so Whoa. much. And your Delphi episode has people talking. Yeah, it's got some people talking. Some Around banter, town. some chatter. Uh, the throwaway that stayed, which is a great handle. Uh, <laughs> they said, I found your show a few weeks ago and have quickly become addicted. Fantastic work. This story breaks my heart. That's regarding the Delphi uh, in case. Thank you. Uh, number two is Anna Wilder. She said, dang, Kyle, you did so much work on this. Great episode, like always, guys. Yeah, Anna, of course, long time. Long time listener. Yeah. Long time dead out. Thank yeah, you. She's the best. Uh, number three, Rolo. <laughs> he said, why didn't I find this channel sooner? Love it. Fan from Norway. Hey, what's up, Norway? Norway, we love you. One of the 17 countries we are charted in, by the way. We are in yeah. the top 100. In uh, I, I, not tr- I wasn't talking shit about your weed laws. Yeah. <laughs> I, it just seems like so I'm sure it's changed since. Yeah. Also. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, guys. And uh, keep listening. Uh, if you want to mosey over to our Patreon, uh, we got a whole bunch of bonus stuff over there right now that you are missing out on. So. Yeah. Uh, we can do free trials over there. So if you want to, go see everything for free and get out. Yeah. Just go over there. Or stick around. Patreon.com slash death and entertainment. Yeah. Go check us out. YouTube, iTunes, uh, Spotify, everything. Leave us a nice review somewhere. Come on. Five stars with some words. Yes. Please. Write hello, I love you, which someone did write on Apple Podcasts. Exactly. Helps the algorithm. We don't care if it's short and sweet. We That's shall right. take it. Yes. All right, that's it. We'll see you next week. And until next time, don't go dying on us. Bye. You have just heard... A true Hollywood... Shocker. I have never seen anything like this before. The movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures... Nightmares. 
Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon.